vape stuff stuff <clears throat> all right well what's up everybody grim green back here today you know since uh september 11th 2019 i haven't done any building rewicking fiddling setting up new things taking down old things even changing coil heads but today all that's gonna change because i'm bringing back some vape stuff stuff and today it's time to finally try the fat rabbit tank i got a fat rabbit tank uh, uh a month ago feels like it was about a month ago and i got it i put it all together i was all super stoked and then it just started leaking and leaking like crazy and slurping liquid into my mouth. So I changed the coil head, I refilled it back up, same thing, just kept happening. It just kept leaking and leaking and leaking and I thought, well that sucks, man. I was kind of excited for the fat rabbit tank and I honestly just wanted it to work. So what I have in my hand now is the newest, most updatedest version of the fat rabbit tank. Apparently Hellvape went back and changed a few things. I'll show you some pictures, but it looks like they thickened up some of the silicone gaskets for the ceiling on the bottom, and they also added what they call pressure relief holes to the top of the, uh, you know, to the top of this top fill thing. The top cap. The top cap where you fill the damn tank. I don't know what those pressure relief holes or extra gaskets on the bottom actually accomplish as far as like the construction of the tank but what i'm hoping they accomplish is that it won't leak and it'll just vape so this fat rabbit tank comes with top airflow and bottom airflow which is i mean come on feels uh feels a little bit uh feels feels just real gimmicky to me i guess lots of airflow with both of those open lots of airflow Kind of feels similar with the top one completely closed off. I honestly don't notice a huge difference in the amount of air you get from closing off that top airflow, but it definitely feels very different. If I open just the bottom airflow and take a sort of a dry toot, feels like a sub-ohm tank. Feels like the airflow's nice and even coming from the bottom. When I open up that top airflow and the bottom airflow, it feels bad. It feels, it feels uneven to me. And just the top airflow honestly feels really good. Feels nice and smooth and even. Top airflow feels even a little bit more restricted than the bottom airflow, which I am a big fan of that restricted lung. You can kind of see right there, that bubble glass, I don't know, that bubble glass actually doesn't super bother me. It's so exaggerated that it kind of, I don't know, I, I don't know. I don't know why that one just kind of doesn't bother me. But as you can see, there's your top airflow, there's your bottom airflow there. It's knurled on the bottom to help with uh, adjusting that AFC. The top one's not knurled, but they both slide real easily. See, yep, that's an 810 drip tip in there. The first thing I do with any sub ohm tank that I get is obviously you open it up, you take it apart, pull the coil head out. Just Pull the coil head out and unscrew it all the way and then kind of reseat it in there. It's really, really cranked down and what that happens is it can mess with the integrity of the O-rings. It can actually lead to more leaking. But in this case, I'm actually gonna grab a different coil head because it comes with one single strip of mesh coil head, big opening right there, but it also comes with this quad mesh coil head. And IMO, that's the one, that's the one to try. You also get a spare glass that appears to be a straight glass as well as an extra baggie of what look like, you know, O-rings, washers, grommets, that sort of thing. I'm just going to be throwing this on my BMI Touch uh, Grim Army Kassaw Fundraiser Edition. It's just one of my, you know, I don't know. I just love this thing. It's a big brick and I love it. Not ergonomic like in any capacity. So I'm just going to seat this new coil head in here. All you need it is to be finger tight. Again, if you crank it down too far, you start messing with those O-rings. Oh, this is a round wire coil head. This is a quad round wire coil head and I find that fascinating. Everybody's all mesh crazy these days. Just mesh, 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 give me mesh. I want mesh, everything mesh. I still believe that round wire coil heads mm, deliver better flavor than mesh. Yeah, I said it. You don't have to agree with me, but if you don't, you're wrong. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yep, this all comes apart for easy cleaning. There's where your top airflow is going to travel, like down these chambers to the bottom there. You have this wacky bubble glass. This is just a crazy looking bubble glass. But honestly, because it's so crazy looking, I kind of that's I kind of like that. I like this more than a lot of other bubble glasses I've seen. Just gonna screw this all together again, not too tight, never too tight. And then we're gonna bleh, fill it up. Fill it up, bleh, fill it up, bleh, fill it up. And the same thing goes for this sub -ohm tank that goes for a lot of sub -ohm tanks. You can fill it way past where you can see. You can really like, ooh, top this off to the very, very top. All right, I'm just gonna let that sit for a second while I do some reconnaissance work here. Oh, wow, okay, so with the bubble glass on here, this is actually a five mil juice capacity on the inside, which is really nice. 25 millimeters where it meets the mod. It bows out to 28 millimeters. All right, so we have a quad round wire coil head in here. It's coming out to 0 0.17, 0 0.16. I'm going to put this at 70 watts. I'm going to leave both airflows open. Let's give it a, let's give it a pull, as they say. Give it a, give it a toot. Just give it a, give it a drag. Everybody says, everybody says something different. Just give it a rip right now. This is loaded up with Turkish Harvest, which is honestly one of my favorite fall flavors. I can only describe it as like caramely apple pie kind of thing. A lot of Turks flavors are a little bit ambiguous, kind of leave it up to your imagination, but I get some like caramel apple goodness out of this liquid. Obviously the coil head on the inside is gonna heavily, heavily affect the airflow. With that one mesh strip coil head in here, the airflow was whoosh, just swooshy as crazy, just huge amounts of air. And now with that quad round wire coil head in here, even with both airflows open, it's, it feels a little bit restricted. But dang, it vapes really well. All right, for my last science experiment, I'm gonna turn off that top airflow. Just gonna rock it full bottom airflow like a traditional sub-ohm tank. Perfect. I love that. I love that so much better than both of them. All right, well, since we did just the bottom, we gotta try just the top now. Bad, bad airflow, bad airflow, bad, it's bad, you're bad. So I'm not a fan of just the top airflow, at least with that quad wire coil head in here, but I am a fan of just the bottom airflow, and I'm actually a fan of both the airflows open together, which I didn't think I would really enjoy. But with this quad round wire coil head in here, it kind of is, wow, it's kind of like the perfect airflow. Dang, that's really nice. Dang, that's actually vaping real, real nice. And the flavor that I'm getting from this fat rabbit with that quad round wire coil head and both airflows open, Primo, lots and lots of bubbles happening. That juice is really getting to that coil head. I think I'm gonna do this with just the bottom airflow. I think that's how I'm gonna land on this thing. Let's try 75 watts. Sure, that's actually real nice, real, real nice. Dang, all right, fat rabbit. Well, you're much better than the one I got before. I'm assuming those beefed up O-rings and gaskets on the bottom are doing their job and helping prevent leaking, which, Look, in 2019, leaking from a sub -ohm tank, in my opinion, is kind of just unacceptable. Sub -ohm tanks have been around for so long, I don't know how you could mess it up so that it would leak. Thankfully, Hellvape has gone through and done a few adjustments on this, fixed those O-rings on the bottom, added pressure relief at the top. I don't know, what do you guys think of that bubble glass? Just let me know down in the comments below. You like it, you don't like it, it looks weird, it looks a little wonky, but not completely objectionable, in my opinion. Man, you can just take a really long pull on this. That's one of my favorite things just of all time is taking that long drag. All right, shit. Well, dang, I I'm, I'm stoked on this. I'm stoked to have set this up. I'm stoked to be vaping it. It vapes a uh, hundred times better than the previous Fat Rabbit tank that I got. Honestly, I'm just excited to have set something new up. That's really... That's really the big victory here, everybody. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. No real vape budget hands needed here, guys. It's only about 33, 34 bucks clicking around the internet. It's it's a sub-ohm tank, you know what I mean? There are 
hundreds of these out on the market. If you don't have one, the Fat Rabbit might be a good option for you. If you're looking to upgrade, sure, shop around. Maybe take a look at the Fat Rabbit. It, it's performing real nice for me right now. And honestly, the fit and finish, the construction of this Fat Rabbit, real nice and beefy. Feels very substantial, feels, feels very well put together. In the interest of being fair, open, and honest, I have recently worked with Hellvape on a few products, and the only reason I worked with Hellvape on a few products is because they have really upped their game in the last few years. Their fit and finish, their construction, it's just improved so much over some older stuff that they were releasing. Anyway, no links are allowed in the description. Thank you so much, YouTube. So you're gonna have to use that Google Foo, but thank you guys, seriously, so much for watching. And as always, no matter what any crooked politicians tell you, yes, absolutely keep on vaping.